in this world, you have chicken people and you have cow people, okay? And everyone wants to say that their form of meat is better for fat loss. Now, when you look at calories, it's kind of simple, right? But everything is not just about calories. There's other things that we have to factor in. So with that, I've broken down a few bodies of research so that we can come to a solid conclusion on this, I hope. Okay, let's break it down. Before we get into the detail, I put a link down below for Sundays. If you have dogs, I definitely recommend this. They have been a sponsor of this channel for a number of years, but really cool stuff. It's a human grade dog food. What that means is that if you literally wanted to eat it as a human, assuming you're human, you could. Not suggesting that you do. The point is, is that it is a dog food that is made with human grade ingredients. It was formulated by a veterinarian that was tired of like dogs getting second rate nutrients, like things that weren't all that great. So we're talking like legit sweet potato, we're talking chicken, beef, like real ingredients that again, if you wanted to eat kibble or you wanted to eat some squares of dog food, you could literally do it and you'd probably feel fine. The point is, is that we should be treating our pets how we want to treat ourselves, right? We love them so much, we care for them like they're our own kids. Bottom line is it works and it's effective and it's good for them. So that link is down below, saves you a significant chunk of change. So definitely recommend you check them out. Top line of the description right underneath this video. Okay, let's get some basic stuff out in the open first. When you look at multiple different cuts of meat, you know that there are various amounts of fat in them, right? The fattier the cut of meat, the harder it is to discern how much difference there really is. I'm gonna paint a picture for you. Let's say you have two ribeye steaks sitting next to each other, okay? One ribeye steak looks like it's the same from the other ribeye steak, but it might very well have 30 grams of fat, whereas the one next to it has 20 grams of fat. Would you really be able to tell by looking at that ribeye steak? Unless you really know what you're looking for and have a keen eye to check out the marbling, you're probably not gonna be able to figure it out. Is this to bash ribeyes? No, I eat at least a ribeye a week. I love ribeyes, but we have to factor this in, okay? And as you get with a fattier cut of meat, you get into briskets, you get into things like that, well, the delta between the two can be huge. So from a simple, simple caloric standpoint, and if you know me, you know that I look deeper than just calories. I think they're important, probably the most important physics equation, but we have to look at other things too. Okay, so with that, it's very easy to overeat them. Whereas if you look at a chicken breast, yeah, you're talking very little fat, the difference between two six ounce chicken breasts in terms of fat and calories is going to be negligible compared to two six ounce cuts of ribeye. So yes, you're safer to opt for a leaner cut of meat. Same kind of thing with fish. It's just less propensity to overeat. But we need to dive deeper than this because chicken doesn't contain some fats that beef contains. Okay, and beef doesn't contain the same fats that even fish contains, but this isn't a fish video. Save that for another day. There is a study published in Nutrition, okay? It took a look at grass-fed beef versus grain-fed beef, and it was trying to identify the differences really between the two, and ultimately what they found is that good quality grass-fed beef, which I hope at this point that's basic education that everyone knows they should try to opt for that, but anyway, high levels of CLA, high levels of what's called transvicinic acid, and also high levels of omega-3 compared to the grain-fed. Let me tell you one thing really quick. When you're trying to opt for specific red meats or meats in general, the omega-3 content is important, but kind of doesn't matter because it's such a moot point, it's such a small amount. The only place where it might start to get a little bit higher up is maybe gonna be like mutton and lamb, where there's a little bit more omega-3s, but even then, let's put that aside. It's such a small amount, it doesn't really matter. But CLA is something pretty unique to dairy, to beef, you might find it a little bits in other things, but for the most part, you're gonna find it in beef. Well, what's interesting about CLA? Well, there was another study published in Nutrition that found that when they gave subjects a glass of milk with 1.7 grams of CLA compared to a glass of milk with placebo, the 1.7 gram CLA group lost more weight, they lost more body mass, body fat mass, excuse me, they lost more body fat percentage, and their waist to hip ratio improved. Now, that was observational, but it was pretty clear. And then when you start looking at the mechanistic data, there's some interesting theories and pretty decent research in a mechanistic fashion how this is working. So there's something called gene expression, and gene expression is where 
genes are expressed, where you're creating genes for specific things. So if you're going to create different proteins or different things within your body, a gene has to be expressed to send a cascade of effects down to ultimately create that. Okay, let me ask you something. Have you ever uh, been to like an old building that has a radiator heater in it? Okay, those heaters that are plugged into the wall and like you turn it on and it takes 20 minutes for the heat to finally come out of it and it's miserable, but it still emits heat. Well, your body kind of has these inside it. They're called uncoupling proteins. And what they do is they take energy from electrons and they ultimately diffuse it as heat through a inefficiency, an inefficiency that is supposed to be there. So a purposeful inefficiency. When that happens, you emit heat and you create heat from calories. So you burn more fat, okay? What we're starting to see is that conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, influences the gene expression of uncoupling proteins. So it helps create more of these radiator heaters. So when you're comparing apples to apples or apples to oranges, you might burn a little bit more fat day to day than you would if you had less uncoupling proteins because you're dissipating more heat. There's also increases in carnitine palmitoyl transferase one, which is what brings fat into a cell to get burned in the first place, double whammy effect. Does this mean that you have a license to go eat the fattiest cut of beef possible because it has CLA in it? No, no. What it does mean is that a moderately fatty cut of meat, of beef, has more fat burning properties than the same amount of weight in a moderately fatty cut of chicken. But if you're going for super lean cuts, you're probably splitting hairs in terms of what's better for fat loss. But if you're opting for a fattier cut, it's, in my opinion, a no-brainer to go for a fattier cut of beef than a fattier cut of poultry, okay? The fat in poultry is not the same as the fat in beef. The fat in beef might be a little bit more stable as well. So that's why you see fattier cuts being cooked at higher temperatures because the higher saturated fat, the myristic acid, and also steric acid can withstand the high heat cooking. Not that chicken can't withstand high heat, but that fat is what allows it to kind of cook the way and taste so good. Okay, so let's circle it back here. How should you do this? How should this look? Okay, in general, if you're going to increase your protein intake and you're going to increase, uh, try to burn fat that way, I would recommend one lean beef meal per day. And when I say lean beef, I mean something like a 93 to maybe 96% relatively lean ground beef. Making a burger with that is perfect. Okay, maybe a New York steak that's going to be a little bit lean, have some fat on it, but not crazy fatty and not crazy lean. Or if you wanna be you know, super fancy, you could have a filet, which still has a decent amount of fat in it, but in the grand scheme of things, it's quite lean. Okay, so I would try to do one serving per day of that so that you get the CLA in and you get the fat burning effects, you get the protein effects in, and then opt for leaner cuts of meat throughout the rest of the day. I did a video previously on what eating one burger per day for 90 days can look like. And results are pretty cool, what can happen to the body. Huge benefits. Heme, iron, uh, creatine, like red meat's got tremendous benefits. So when you're looking gram for gram, you're gonna get more nutrition, more potential fat burning ability, and more overall oxygenation, like heme, iron, things like that, and creatine from red meat than you are from white meat. But white meat is going to be the safer caloric bet. So nutrition, calories. Nutrition, calories. Nutrition matters but so do calories. So you gotta find that balance. So one serving of good red meat per day, along with poultry, fish, and a nice cycling of different fats coming from good quality meat and eggs. I'll see you tomorrow.